So I've been doing some <clears throat> studying on how to best uh, operate a YouTube channel and um, turns out I suck. <laughs> no, I, uh, for, I'm going to offer a quick channel update here. Um, I think I just need to put my best effort into this if I'm going to do it. And um, I might have to gear the channel toward a, a, an aspect um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I, I kind of wanted this to be more of a variety thing where I um, just talk about what's on my mind. Um, but no one knows who I am, so I, I, I can see why the channel wouldn't grow as a result of that. They would be like, okay, some schmuck is talking about whatever's on his mind, whatever. Like, I, there's a gazillion of those. Um, so I'm thinking about making a majority of the content geared towards movie related things because I feel like that's a really good vehicle for expressing ideas um, and discussing ideas and then um, maybe being more consistent about when I deliver things that aren't movie related. So I might have maybe multiple videos that are about movies, but maybe even changing the name of the channel to more appropriately uh, guide viewers toward a, a movie related channel, but would also still have my sort of Sunday series that I do. Um, and people can just enjoy that if they want or not. And um, maybe have a commentary time as well, but it would be consistent with those times. So um, <clears throat> that's kind of what I'm leaning towards here. Um, that way people know what they're getting into when they're on the channel and they would see this, like the Solomon series, they would see that they're not interested in it. They can pass on it. No big deal. Um, but I do feel like there is no good reason for people to watch this channel um, because there's, there, what is it? You know, the name's unpronounceable. The, uh, <laughs> the It's not, it's Luthanius, but most people cannot pronounce the name. Um, so there's no way to search, search the channel out and find it. So, um, uh, that might be a, a change coming soon. Um, and then if the channel grew, I would bother trying to edit it. And there's been so many times I wish I could edit what I was talking about and, uh, couldn't do it for one reason or another, because I haven't committed to any, any edit, you know, editing material or anything like that or software. Cause I was just waiting for the channel to potentially grow and see if it was worth my time. Um, but I think I do need to make some changes and actually try to grow the channel. I haven't really done much to do that. I've, again, I've done research and I haven't implemented anything I've learned. And it's like, maybe I should actually try to do some of these things. So we'll see. I'm not sure. Um, all right, on to Solomon. Um, this one's going to be short, but it's really good. Um, you know, if God is God he's going to put certain powers into place. He's responsible. Solomon's made it very clear that God is in total charge. And that means if he puts an authority over you, you have to obey that authority. And what he says is that if you are obeying an authority and that authority is coming down hard on you, um, and it could be creating um, problems for you. For example, you may have to go to war, right? If you're wise, he says that you will still find happiness. And he's he, very interesting. You know, Solomon says that we don't really know the future. And because we don't know the future, wisdom will help you. Ha wisdom will help you to realize that you have to proceed with what's happening in your life right now and realize that there is an assigned time for things. And a wise person accepts this. A wise person accepts this and they move with it. They go, okay, this is the time for this right now and I'm going to be participating in that. And there's nothing they can do about it. And this acceptance, I don't want to say it's just the acceptance, but, but a wise person knows and can accept the fact they don't know the future and say, okay, I 
accept this for what it is now, and they end up being happier with life. Um, when we look back at the past and people get upset and they go, well, you know, why did people do it that way? Well, it's because they didn't know the future. It's easy to look at the past and say, look at all the mistakes they made. Sure, you know, yeah, that's easy to do. But that doesn't mean that they knew the future. If they knew the future, they may have changed everything they did, right? So Solomon would say, look, you don't know what the future holds. You have to live for the moment and accept your role in that moment. Now, think about Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was given these dreams by God that he, God knew he wouldn't understand what they mean. They troubled him greatly, but he didn't understand what they meant. God had put him in that position of power. And so he needed a prophet and a, a prophet of God came to him and said, this is what the dreams mean. I don't, if I recall right, they weren't good news either. <laughs> they were pretty bad news. But Nebuchadnezzar knew they were true. That the prophecies about the dreams were true. The interpretation. And that's kind of what Solomon gets on too. He says, who can interpret the times? If you're not wise, how can you interpret the times? How can you interpret something? Only the wise can do that. So he's saying, look, don't worry about the future. Interpret the times you're in now. And a what does he mean by that? That means you say, okay, there is a time for things. Like right now is a time for peace. So you interpret, a wise person interprets those times. And they say, this is a time for peace. And so this it may not always be that way, but I'm going to live out these times. Now, the next question is this. Solomon talks a lot about kings. He's saying, look, don't depart from what the king tells you to do because the king could come down on you. And it's very interesting because it, he's basically saying the same thing about a king that he's saying about God. Well, because a king is an extension of God's authority. In that they keep order. And the kings still need their fields cultivated. So even if a king does evil, at some point these things are going to balance themselves out. They're going to have to. Unless he wants to get in the, and do the fields himself, which he's not going to do. Very interesting. Um, now, but Solomon is, looks at this and says, you know, do not perform wickedness to fix these things, right? So he's saying, what is he talking about? Well, he's saying to fall out of the authority. Don't fall out of the authority. Even if at the time it doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Now, clearly sometimes we see evil. You think Solomon didn't know that kings perform evil? Of course he did. Now, what about our times, though? What about the times we live in? Because we don't have kings. Well, in our times, um, we would look at it and say, okay, in the times we live in, what what is authoritative? Now, here in America, it's the Constitution. Which means this, sometimes it is wise for a U.S. citizen to exercise the rights. It's wise for them to do that from time to time. In fact, it's probably necessary, if you're going to be a good Christian, to exercise certain uh, citizen authorities. I watch a show on YouTube called Long Island Audit and uh, Audit the Audit. The first time I saw them, I thought they were wackos. Uh, until I realized, uh, after watching recent elections and seeing people in the police defend people in the government who were doing anti-constitutional things and extra-constitutional things, and they were helping them do it. And I was like, ooh, they're clearly not holding to the Constitution on some things. And so these people go in and they, they audit, you know, these things. And sometimes they go... Sometimes I used to be 100% on the side of the police in these situations, but now I'm realizing, you know, some of them are stepping outside of their constitutional bounds. And it might, even though it might be picky from time to time to have an, an, a, a First Amendment auditor go in there, um, <clears throat> and it's a little goofy, of course, but I think there could be some good to it, too. But the question is this, is all of it wise? So it might be if you're in a situation in America where um, you feel like you're not being treated correctly within the bounds, bounds of the Constitution, you may need to hold to your rights a little bit as a Christian because that helps balance things in our government. 
On the other hand, if you're dealing with a police officer who's had a really bad day and you're aware they're a human being, you might need to hold off on the audit a little bit. Why? Because it's a human being with a gun. <laughs> Come on. Um, and wisdom would teach you what's the right moment for the thing that I'm dealing with right now. That is what a wise person does. A wise person doesn't make big, extravagant predictions about the future. They just don't do that. They, they, a wise person knows the times they're in now, and they know that the future belongs to God. This is a much, much of my talking points from the Solomon series so far have been very much in line almost in the flow of the passages in Ecclesiastes. This particular one, I just want to warn you, is a little bit more freeform. It's more going off how I felt when I read it, as opposed to staying real strict with the, with the text. So this was uh, Solomon 8, 1 through 9, if you want to read that, um, if you want to you know, get really tight in with what he's talking about. But anyway, um, like and subscribe. Have a good one.